Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Town Board Work Session for September 13th, 2022. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we can just bow our heads in a moment of prayer as we give thanks for living in a country that allows us to gather in this way. This past weekend, we spent time reflecting and remembering the victims of 9-11. 21 years later, let us not only remember the lives lost, but the reason they were lost. And they were lost because of an attack on the fabric of America. On this night, let's pray for our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters and EMTs, let us also keep in our thoughts and prayers all of the brave soldiers defending our freedoms still today, both overseas and here at home. Thank you. Amen. All right, we'll do introductions. Good evening, Diana Quas, town clerk. Tom Diana, Councilman, Deputy Supervisor. Matt Slater, Town Supervisor. Ed Lachterman, Councilman. Sergio Esposito, Councilman. Luciana Howitt, Councilwoman. Sorry. Adam Rodriguez, Town Attorney. Excellent. Great to see Adam Rodriguez back here. We're going to invite our planning board up for uh, our first item on the agenda. Mr. Mr. Supervisor, yes, can sir. I just make an announcement? Yes, sir. So uh, on uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday, September 24th, uh, our uh, Cops versus the Kids uh, fundraiser baseball game is on. It's going to be at a Legacy. It's going to start at 4.30. We are going to have Shane Spencer of the New York Yankees come sign autographs. It's going to be a meet and greet. As you know, the uh, money that we raise goes towards uh, children with life-threatening diseases and their families. We sponsor them for a week at a place in Casco, Maine. It's called Camp Sunshine. And uh, what's interesting about it is that uh, they... The, the children would go up there during a week where other children that are suffering from the same life-threatening illness uh, go up there. So it's kind of some com camaraderie and stuff like that. There are hospital. It, uh, there were doctors on staff and um, all of that, but um, we sponsor. It's twenty-five hundred dollars per family to sponsor them, um, and uh, we're looking to sponsor four families this year. So if any everybody could come, that everybody's invited. It's a great time. Four thirty. Five o'clock is going to be like a quick ceremony. Five fifteen is going to be first pitch. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if everybody could come, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Just oh, sorry. I just wanted to correct Sergio on one thing. Shane Spencer also played for the Mets. Oh jeez. Who? He doesn't, he he doesn't talk just about say you know. I just, just say Mets? you know. Who are they? New York team? You know the, the first place New York Mets. <laughs> Who? Just, just making sure you know. Um, I don't think it is a great. It is a great. It is Who? a great event. Great Ooh. cause. What are you now? <laughs> <In all. laughs> we are allowed to uh, joke around here. It's, it, it is okay. But no, it is a great event, uh, a great cause. And Sergio has been doing this for quite some time. So great job. Thank you for keeping it up. Yeah, Thank I was going to say, Sergio has been championing this, this, this cause for six years now, minimum. Yeah. Six. And uh, get, go on out and support him. Thank you. All right. So we'll talk with, let's take our first item, which is our planning board uh, members. Uh, Mr. Fawn, where you at, buddy? He's there. Mr. Bach, you want to cut? Grab a chair. Come on Mr. up. Mr. Lascala, do you want to come up, or well, we, we want to keep him down at the podium. Um, do we want to have no right audio there? up here. That's why. So why oh, don't we, why don't yeah. we keep you guys yeah, over yeah, yeah. at the podium? We also have John Taggart, our director of planning, with us. Uh, so, Mr. Fawn, I know that uh, you have a couple of requests, and yes. so why don't we have a discussion about them? Thank you very much for your time. I know you have a large agenda. Um, the town board some months ago took a proactive approach and got some consultants on board for environmental work and traffic work or traffic engineering. Uh, we've been having internal discussions uh, amongst the members of the board and John Tegeter and his staff, Robin. We think it's time that we got a historical consultant on board. We have one application in front of us now, but we've had others in the past. and. It's become clear that's a very sensitive topic, and we just think we need, just like with traffic and with environmental, we could use the uh, professional services of a 
historical consultant. Um, do these historical consultants work with uh, SHPO? Um, I believe is the acronym that they use. <laughs> I want to make sure I say it right. Um, um, to make their determinations, do you know? Have, have you worked with them in the past? The historic, no. No? This okay. Is, it's, I think this is something that is really becoming, especially in Yorktown with some of the historic structures. I know in the past on the board, we've seen some torn down. Uh, you know, in particular now we've got the sound view in front mm -hmm. of us. And it just, you know, between what you're hearing from the applicant and from some of the historical board members, we need to get, you know, on our end, someone who's going to look at it from our perspective and okay. what we're looking at. I understand. But I don't know how they would work with the other organizations. I'm sure they do work with them. Okay. All right. So we, we, we can, to the town board, we can put an RFP together. Mr. Rodriguez, put an RFP together for on-call historical consultant work like we did for traffic and, and environmental? Yeah, I just need a scope. Okay. The, the, the on call portion would be on call for the planning board or for. I would uh, think for the town board or the planning board. Right. Okay. In particular. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, I agree with that. That's. And funding wise, uh, same structure as with uh, traffic and environmental, so it would be with the applicant. Right. Okay. You could put an escrow account. And Rich, have you ever worked with a uh, organ with a consultant like this, a historical consultant? That's what I just asked him. He said, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Because, <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, well, uh, let me answer. How how big of a field is that? Maybe John. Tegel Maybe John can tell us. I don't know if John. Yeah. John, you probably. John knows everything. He he's going to give us the answer. Here he is. <coughs> it's huge. Oh. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's you know it's a I wouldn't say it's a big field, but there's plenty of consultants out there. We have worked with one in the town. They did a. Uh, we had uh, Larson Fisher did a reconnaissance survey which is basically they went ar around the town and looked at all of the properties and identified historic properties. We have several hundred that have been identified and they uh, categorized them, gave a little history and uh, evaluation of each one. So dovetailing off of that, you know, when those properties do come in front of the planning board or, and or the town board, it's good to have someone that has that kind of knowledge to sort of help guide what to do with it, whether or not it's eligible you know things of that nature so, so but there know. are a number of those types of consultants around just so you know john they stopped at my house they probably did yep and i think they told me about you yep and when they stopped there they gave me a little plaque and yeah. the plaque says on this site nothing ever happened <laughs> <laughs> but there's time there's time yet so <laughs> and, and i apologize rich because that was sort of i remember that there was a book with all of these yes. these houses in it now did sound view was sound view part of that sound view was as the Underhill House yeah. was identified in that um, reconnaissance survey, it was not listed as recommended for landmarking uh, or that it was eligible, and I'm talking state and national. Right. That report did identify uh, somewhere between 70 and 90 properties that are eligible, um, but that was not one of them. Okay. So, so a question coming before the planning board with a property that's on that eligible list, is that something that our planning board would push against the will of the applicants? So, you know, I, I have a, a little bit of an issue if it's like, hey, I, I have a house I bought and I want to do some work in it. It's like, no, 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 you can't change anything because it's, we, we think it should be landmarked. Mm -hmm. If you oh. can go to the podium, if you're going to oh. speak. No, I, I think th that's beyond what we're, we're looking to determine. We're in the beginning of this process. Right. And I know you, there's been a lot of talk about where we are in the process. It's not an, it's a very detailed process. So we have to determine certain things. And we need the assistance of these people to go out there, especially some of these off structures. Okay. Clearly the main structure is historic. Right. But this isn't where you would say you have to landmark it no, this that, that's that's outside the purview of what we do as a planning board and it's a it's a certainly a reasonable question but i don't think it's a question for us because we would not be able right to do that sort of thing all we need to do is we're looking for assistance in evaluating the impacts of the projects that are before us and this issue has come up in the course of public hearings 
and we, we want to make sure that we evaluate it fully and make the right decision right. for the town. That's okay, because I, you know, and, and just, you know, to finish my thought process, I, I look at, you know, I look at parenting, and, you know, you tell your kids you need to do something, they don't. And I worry that, that historical structures, truly historical structures, will suffer. Uh, and I'm glad that, that you're looking at the, the outlying stuff, and we know, we know that, and we're not pushing towards that, because I, I think of the Bernstein House. And I think I about how, how long it went, and, and you know, I've always, I, I love the old architecture, but to see that that, that house fell into, into disrepair, and, you know, I, it just is very troublesome that, that, you know, we could try to push and have an opposite result, so I worry about that. There's other agencies that can take up that mantle if they choose to right. do so, right. but, again, on the planning board level, that's not something that we're Good. able to do right. or, or right. even considering. We okay. appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Ed, as I recall with the Bernstein House, that was a um, an issue that it could never be brought to code at right. this point in time, ceiling heights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that was and, – and Mr. Franzoso was quite passionate that he wanted to get that house restored, and he couldn't do it. But, but I also worry about, you know, someone buys a historic home – Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, you need to landmark it. You need to do this. You need to do that. And, hey, you know what? That's not what I'm in for. I'm just going to let it sit. I'm going to, and they don't do anything with it, or they can't sell it because that was all a public, uh, a public process per se, yeah. where it scares away any other buyer. It's like, well, we know, we already know the result. Why would I buy a car that'll never run? Or why would I buy a house that I can't do anything with? So right. I, I worry about that being. Uh, uh, a, a, an effect of uh, negativity. There. And Aaron may remember this one. Um, the Frost House in Trouble, many years ago, the gentleman came in and wanted to do something. I think he wanted to paint it. Red? <laughs> bright red? I don't know what color. But whatever color he wanted to paint it... it ended up with right. He wanted yeah. to paint it, and because historical preservation came through, and they said, no, you can't paint it that color, or he wanted to put new shutters on, whatever it was, he said, okay, I'll fix you. You can't stop me from putting a red, white, and blue flag across the front of it. And that's what he did. He painted it red, white, and blue. Well, I, I just, <laughs> I really appreciate you recognizing the need for some more assistance yep. and being able to have the conversation with the board to seek that assistance. And it only improves your process overall, which is what we're trying to do. Uh, it's exactly very important. You know, I, we were talking about it earlier. You know, someone could come in tomorrow if that applicant decided to work they sold and someone else came in and put a demo permit mm -hmm. to tear the structure down. I don't think there's anything preventing that. So we really are looking at it from all angles. Right. To come up with I'm not surprised. Yeah. So. Nope. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Do you want to talk about that? I do. Because okay. there's something else that you raised with me that I wanted you to bring to the whole board uh, to provide your perspective on. All right. So I think maybe John would be the best to talk to this, but we do have another project in front of us on garden um which falls back to this uh i guess it's the old code the affordable mm -hmm. housing code right so i think uh it's probably the time to look at doing something there um can you you want to explain to the board yeah. just what the i'll let john do his work thank you uh this is called referenced as the hopman property it's off garden lane okay uh and Many years ago in the 90s, it received a rezoning to R3 yep. from the town board for 20 units. They, and the 20 units was by virtue of getting two bonus units if they're affordable. Mm -hmm. So that is what the question is now. This applicant has come in with the 20 units, and so this question has been raised. You know, is it appropriate to give 20 units without them being, the two being affordable? So um, my recollection which was an error last night both myself and Sergio was that we had removed that section of the 300-39 th uh, that limits th the use of that um, section of code in the management of affordable housing units we haven't done that yet uh, if that is lifted volunteer you know volunteer I'm gonna call them volunteer affordable units that are offered can come into that program right uh, it's not a requirement won't be a set aside but certainly there will be the ability 
for the, either the housing uh, or housing commission or board to manage those and and put them into their program if they choose or find other right. managers for that but there will be this mechanism and this um, section of code that will give guidance and management to those units right. so the section of the code right now states that if a uh, a builder wanted well here's a scenario a builder comes in wants to uh put in uh apartments and wants to voluntarily uh give two units let's say in this case it's two units to affordable housing the section of the code prevents those two units to be managed by our town entity right Yes, because there is a, there's the a community housing board. There's a sunset date in there of like 1994. Right. So anything before 1994, nothing after. So. So it, so in this scenario, then if somebody gives us two voluntary units of affordable housing, you know that are going to be classified as affordable housing, um, then it would be some other agency like Westchester County or something that would be managing them and not our own community housing board. That's that. It could go that way. Yes. Or or there would be no. Uh, no instance in which an applicant might care to offer those so so is this retroactive then so this this is an approved subdivision at this point it it's a no it it's rezoned the, it's an approved rezone. Rezone. It's an approved okay. so the property has the r3 rezoning on it okay it was vetted out with 20 units and two of those were expected and required to be affordable under so it, that decision that under the right, past under decision. The so it has to stay that way According to Adam, he believes that that stands. I haven't talked to him at length on it, but he did give that opinion. So now if the if that uh, project goes through, those two units would be affordable, but our community housing board wouldn't be able to manage them because of this line in our code that right. says they're not able to manage. So we would be allowing them to manage the two units um, if, they, if, if the builder would, because the builder has to do the two units in order to get to 20. He doesn't have a choice under the code. Under his reason. That, that's my under belief. His approval. Under his approval. As I stand here this moment, yes. Okay. And under that old code, we couldn't get, give that particular builder subdivision the um, flexibility at that point. I know it's not the flexibility standard, but the flexibility to um, add a couple extra units. Is that correct? It was There's nothing already, in the code that allows the planning board to do that. But they already got the two extra units. They already units. got the two units in the it. it was a density decision. bonus. Density bonus. That's a density, density bonus, bonus that they were yes. already provided with the two affordable units. Two affordable units. Right. That's how they got to 20 units. Yeah, I definitely want to look further into that so that we don't get caught in the web where we can't give it to our community. Um, well, right now you can't. We can't. Right now, you cannot. The law, the town law prohibits, and Count Belfer is here, and he can speak directly to this. And we've spoken to him multiple times about it. But you, that's the, that was one of the things in the law that we found that we could modify. So these two units that are going to be affordable cannot be managed by the community housing board as it stands. The code prohibits it. So somebody else would have to manage it if so, this project was, were to go through. Right. We'd, be, we'd have these two units that would be hanging out there in the wind and managed by some other the agency. County or Either the county, a not-for-profit, uh, something other than our own, our own people, community housing board. And even if it did go, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, but even if we did lift it, it's not required that they go to the community housing board, but it still allows them to go to the community housing board. So you're just giving them that local option mm -hmm. by lifting the year out of the code. Okay. That's all. We, that's that's all we do. Doesn't require them to go. It allows them to go. Currently, these two units, if they were built tomorrow, would have to be managed by the county of Westchester or a not-for-profit. Ken, do you want to step? You want to step up to the podium as the chair of the community housing board to t to speak yes, on this morning? Thank you. I, I I really have a a question that's a legal question because when we were looking at the revisions to 300-39 of the code, the line that was going to be deleted said. Only units which have been established as affordable as of August 17th, 1994 shall be subject to the provisions of this section. What does established as affordable mean? If there was an approval that said you have 20 units and two of them are affordable, does that mean that they were established as affordable units with that approval? That's just I mean, it could, but I think it also is an opportunity for us to, to finally modernize the and lift yeah. that date, which I think is something that everyone, you know, that we've spoken several times about. Yes. 
both you and I, with our planning department, with the county. I mean, because if it's not now, it's just going to be another project down the road. Yeah, we should get it done. Yep. And they're voluntary units. I, right. it's, it, I want to be clear about that. The the builder will be voluntarily right. it's donating, a, let's say, them or classifying them as affordable housing. Right. It's not, a, it's not mandated. I agree. They got, they got the two units as part of the bonus as density. As part of the bonus density. Part of the bonus density. Right. Correct, John? Correct. So, again, I think that brings us back to a conversation that we've had a couple times. So, you know, maybe the board, we can put it on for another work session to revisit those code amendments that Ken and the planning department have been working on, uh, one of which would directly relate to this type of uh, barrier they from were the minimal. community housing board. They were minimal changes. They were just bringing them up. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember just, them modernize it enough uh, where I thought we were, there was some comfort there from the board. And that date is definitely necessary. So, I mean, I just, it's just, to me, it's, it's a no-brainer as far as, you know, if I had to pick somebody that w was going to manage, you know, affordable housing units, I'd want it to be, you know, our own community housing board. I mean, I just, why would I want anybody else to do or it? Or at least but. ensure there's a local option. Because that's what it's really doing is it's ensuring the local option of the community community housing boards available should they decide to go that route. If they go to the county or if they go to a not-for-profit, that's their decision. But at least we know that there's a local option available right here within. So who within chooses the where they go? The John? builder? Who would choose? Who would make the decision say, all right, I'm a builder. I'm coming in. Thank you for the density bonus uh, for the two units, which has been established Thanks. in 19... Uh, ninety. This 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 rezone goes back to what year? I think it's ninety three, but I'd have to whatever, go. give or take. It's it's so it's know, right on the cusp of the it's thirty timeline. years ago. <laughs> wow. it's 30 How years close ago. do you want to call it, Ken? <laughs> so so who would who would I? I mean, I'm just unfamiliar with it. Who would who would say, okay, we have these two units, we want X to manage them. Who would who would make that determination? In this case, I think it would be a discussion with the applicant and the planning board. Uh, you know, this was just brought up last night at the first moment that the applicant was in front of the board. So we don't even know really their deeper or well thought out reaction yet. Uh, but I think those discussions are what happens kind of in an organic way with the planning board over some, you know, several discussions and and uh, considerations of the of the issue. So he could come in actually right now. And say, okay, look, I'm only going to build 18. I don't want your density he bonus. He could. Um, and do nothing with affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or he could, well, like you say, he's only got the uh, the R3 zoning now. He doesn't have anything broken up or anything like that yet. No. So in the meantime, I believe that this board could probably, and Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, and I may be, um, you change the code to reflect that any of these affordable housing units will be directed to our own community affordable housing. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I think that I'm we not. can I mean, I think the, textually I think, change the law. But, uh, which I think There's we've, we've discussed before, though, which is the amendments that just lift the year barrier mm -hmm. so that the local option is there and they have access to that local option. Right. Whether it's this project think, yeah. or the next, that's, that, you know, which right. could yeah. be proposed, who knows. And the housing board would be involved in that discussion of course. as well. Mm -hmm. they, they, I, of as, course. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, they rely on other entities yes. for advice and help, assistance. Yes. Housing Action Council is one of them. Right. So I think the answer to you, I think what you're what you're saying is you're right, but I think the answer is just very simply, you know, going back to the to the proposed amendments which included lifting the 1993 year out of the code, just eliminating right. it altogether. So that if there's an affordable housing uh, unit or units that get proposed and built, mm -hmm. they're afforded the opportunity with a local option of the community of the Yorktown Community Housing Board. That's all it does. Right. Yeah, it it's not a mandate. It doesn't mandate it. It doesn't uh, Yeah. Yeah. And just to be clear, the reason why this even came up, right, it was brought up last night in planning, is because um, th this uh, th somebody else bought this property and came in and wants to develop it now, and uh, they're going on the rezone that happened. Using, several, using the th approval 30, that they've received. Yeah, 30 years received. ago. Yeah. Almost 30 years ago. Which but. happens. I mean, people purchase properties with, the, with previous approvals, and they say, okay, great, I can go build this, and off they go. Okay. So... 
we want to we can we can take we can get the uh, amendments as they were originally proposed into local law format and uh, bring it back to refer out we can you want to have another conversation about it I think we have another conversation about it at this point and then and this way here we can um, wrap our collective heads around the whole thing and let's see if we can get this done all right so Adam can you do me a favor can you recirculate the proposed amendments that we brought out in the summer that Ken was kind enough to work on with us. The uh, board? So, I'm sorry? The board? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We'll, let's recirculate into the town board and we'll, and we'll bring it on for another topic, another discussion so that this way it's fresh in mm -hmm. everyone's minds. Okay? Everyone okay with that? Yeah, okay with that. Works? Yeah. That's good? All right. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Keep up the good, good work. Great job with the planning board. Appreciate all you do. Keep up the great job. Good night. Good seeing you, Willie. And by the way, if you guys want to stay, since uh, you know you're involved you're, in a lot of these other uh, projects here, you're more than welcome to to stick around. You can actually take your seat back if you want. <laughs> you're here. You're here already. Yeah, we Might can well switch. <laughs> guys are moving fast now. Yeah, they're running for the door. Holy we, smokes! We can switch. Oh, yeah, that's hysterical. <laughs> All right, 3241 Crompon Road, Guiding Eyes for the Blind. Jody Cross from Zarin and Steinmetz. And the team from Guiding Eyes. Ooh. And Bill's here, too, which is great. Good evening. Jody Cross from Zarin and Steinmetz. Hey, I'm Jody. here with Bill Ma from Guiding Eyes and Jorina, who I think ah, lives Joe. here. Um, <laughs> we were last here on July 12th, where we presented this rezoning petition. At that time, the board accepted the petition. Um, Believe declared its intent to act as lead agency and referred it to the planning board for uh, its review and comment. Uh, we went to the planning board in July, and uh, they also addressed it in August. Um, and at the August 15th meeting, uh, the planning board suggested some changes to our proposed language. Um, they issued a memo, which is dated yesterday, which I believe this board received. Um, basically, just taking our language that we had proposed in Exhibit A of the petition, uh, reducing the minimum acreage to seven acres from the proposed 12, uh, revising language uh, regarding soundproofing, and omitting language regarding the number of permitted dogs. Um, so really, we're just here tonight hoping that the board will set a public hearing, and we're here to answer any questions that the board has. Thank you, Jody. Appreciate that. Uh, we did receive... A number of uh, responses, and I know you've been going through that process, uh, but obviously the county responded, uh, the uh, ABACA responded uh, from their August 9th meeting with no objections, conservation board saw no issue, uh, let's see, DEP uh, had a few comments uh, regarding the SWIP which I think we can deal with on a, on a site plan level, mm -hmm. right? That's for you, Joe, by the way. Um, and they did use uh, uh, Miss Arena. Use your, use your, your, use your fancy. I, you know, we got that just for just Joe Just for you. That is actually the Joe Rena podium. podium. It is. Tom, can you, can you get that? Can you get Joe using the podium? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, Joe, I just wanted you to know, though, they did use your favorite phrase, which is a designated Main Street area. I know how much you love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but all those will obviously we can deal with later. Um, uh, and then, of course, the uh, the planning board comments, which uh, I thought were were well done. Uh, and there was no objection from the tree advisory uh, commission either. Um, thoughts from the town board on the text amendments. <clears throat> I think they're 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 okay. they're well put in there. You're going to just basically shrink the size, not shrink the size of the lot, but encompass less of it for the facility. Is that what I'm to understand? I'm not sure I understand the question. In other words, you said you went from 12 to seven acres. No, that's the that would just be the uh, the minimum. The minimum. Oh, acreage. gotcha. That would be in code. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's just for the because we have to give them the code. We have to alter the, the the town code to allow them to fit into this zone. Oh, okay, right. okay. And so they came. So they've been working with all of our departments to to refine the language, and I think they did a very very good job on that. Um, I think going down from the twelve to seven makes sense, uh, and it still fits within your your proposed site plan, which is great. Correct. 
Um, the soundproofing, I know uh, Dan Ciarcia will uh, appreciate immensely uh, as uh, the back uh, neighbor there. Um, any other thoughts or comments from the town board? No? I'm know. sorry, I didn't see this. I, I, I saw it, you gave it to me, but I didn't realize what it was. Okay, Madam Clerk, are we able to set a public hearing? Yes, can we set it for considering the two holidays we have up? Can we do October 18th? October 18th for the public hearing. We'll make a motion to, for so set the public Second. hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. We will see you on the 18th. Great, thank you so much. Joe, you Thanks. can take that home, by the way. <laughs> Joe, you could carve your name into the uh, stanchion. No, no, but I thought the, the put computer it on would fit on the bottom when you were when you were. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. No, it, won't fit down. it won't. Oh, we'll have to modify that. Joe, let's why are you see, being put difficult? Put the computer man. down there. See, let's see. Does it fit? No. Nope. Oh man. Joe, Joe, Joe you, you need just to modernize to a smaller computer. That's a problem. If you use an iPad, you'd be perfect. Yeah. Don't go to the dark side, Joe. Don't do it. <laughs> That's right. Don't go to the dark side. We tried to do we, we Matt had you in mind when he um, found that. Found that. <laughs> I did find it, and I said, this is the guy, this is the Joe Rena podium. Well, well, Diana made fun of me for months over this thing. I did. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can modify that lower shelf for What's you. What's that? Yeah, maybe you can. Uh, maybe oh, there will be, yeah. I'm going to put it right grade. there. All right, we'll go over to Volta. Electric charging <laughs> stations, Kristen Motel, Trent, and Kimley. Did I say that right? That Almost. Almost? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Good evening, Supervisor. Members How are of you? Board. I'm doing great. How are you? We're doing great. We're glad to have you back. So I, I Yeah, happy to be back. Um, we actually have Peter Salatakis from Kimley Horn tonight okay. and Gabby DeSilva from Volta. Great. So some fresh faces for you. Um, since we were last before you on the zoning amendment, we have received site plan approval from the planning board on the Staples Plaza location, and Great. we're back tonight for site plan approval of the mall to discuss site plan approval of the mall installations. Uh, that is four chargers being proposed, two at each main entrance, the north and south. Uh, we have a memo from the Conservation Commission um, with no comments. There are two additional memos, and uh, we did appear before the planning board last night. So um, the planning board had comments on the location of the stations to the south, yep. um, which we'll, we'll run through a little bit. And we were able to actually make some modifications to the plans based on their comments. Some of their, some of their comments awesome. were, um, were constructive, and, and they had some great points. Are you uh, able to bring that up on the screen by any chance? So yeah. I'm trying. It's not quite connecting. Can I plug in my USB to one of yours? I got you. Yeah, that works. Works better. So the while we're doing that, the um, the planning board they requested a regular curbed island in the location of the striping, and um, Volta actually has bollards around their stations. So our position is that the bollards actually provide a little bit more protection than a curbed island would. There is um, an increased cost, a significant cost, to installing a curbed island. So, um, and Kimley Horn will take, Peter will take you through that. Uh, so that is something that we would request that the bollards would be adequate. The second recommendation from the planning board was to move the chargers towards the center of the parking aisles, which we have done. Uh, that was a great recommendation and they will be on the raised, um, they, they'll be up on raised concrete platforms. Um, the third recommendation from the planning board involved moving the stations actually one parking space down that unfortunately we're not able to do because we have a lease with the mall mm -hmm. and in order to sh shift locations that would require an update with the the lease with the mall and and to go back to discussions um that would take a significant amount of time and volt is really looking to put their infrastructure in the ground um we would request that given the modifications we've made to the current location of the chargers on the south side of the mall, we're adequately addressing those safety concerns and shifting them one spot down um, Sorry. would be would kind of be de minimis. So here. you're moving the charging stations from the front of the from the entrance of the parking spot to the you 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 pretty much you have two charging stations, one on the corner down here, which was the one of most concern where it gets narrower. Yeah. Um, so it's right here where that, where that CRV is? 
Yeah, right where the tire of the CRV, you see the the last square, so it gets narrower there. So what they so there's one charging station right at the edge, and there's one charging station on the other edge in the original plan. Uh huh. And uh, one of the recommendations was to move the charging stations, butt them together, kind of in the middle of that island. And the planning board actually wanted that that island to be a curb. Just the one you're looking for. So, you this mean is, the painted island, sir? This is the document. No, they wanted I mean, a concrete sheet, curb. They wanted it concrete, not the way it is Next sheet now. down? Right. right. Next sheet down in this document will show the revised location. So this one right here? One sheet further, my apologies. We'll one see sheet. that we've now shifted the stations from the end of the striped islands inwards to the beginning of the stall itself, uh -huh. such that any car, if they're doing a wide swing radius, it wouldn't really be clipping the stations or the proposed bollards and they're in a much more suitable location from a safety standpoint. Yeah, because if you looked at the original plan, the uh, the stations were kind of like the, the one on the on the, the narrower edge was like really hanging out there. But now let me ask you a question. You this said, is what we're looking at. I'm sorry, Sergio. This is this is the correct image? Yeah, yeah okay. that's it. Great. So, so you said that they're, they're going to be on concrete pads anyway with bollards. Um, how big are the concrete pads? So the concrete pad is going to be 3 by 2.5 feet, so 3 and a quarter by 3 and a quarter. So three by pad. three, just to keep it simple, because, yeah. How okay. high? Absolutely. It's going to be a six-inch made plumb. So it, if in case there's a slight slope, it might be five inches, but six inches of max to which we made plumb to the existing grade. So now what is the entire, so you're talking about six and six, so you're talking about, uh, so what is the entire area of that island, because the, the planning board wanted it all to be a curb, right, or concrete, right where all the stripes are. It would be a curb, right? So, just, so what, what, so, what is so that curbing, area? curbing around like this whole piece here, right? Um, I don't see your mouse. You don't see my mouse. Uh, anywhere where the stripes are. Mm. Right. So that would be. See my mouse up here. Which is a significant area to curb, right? We're looking at probably an, right this there. is an estimation based off of just the aerial image, possibly up to like 300 square feet of area. So it's going to be roughly the perimeter of that, looking at upwards of 100 linear feet of added curb to this site to which we're not currently adding any curb at all for this project in the scope right now. So so the curbing around here would not be feasible for you? That's our position. Is so the issue that, that the planning board had was that, uh, well, it, I think I personally think it's much better where the positioning is now because it was almost like hanging on okay. the edge. Yeah. So yeah. If, you, if you look at that, that's the street. So a car is coming right along that edge Right where that painted edge, that's where the Coming right this way, that, right? That, the car's right there. <clears throat> you know, it's not like um, there's any, any space between the white uh, perimeter and any cars. And that's was it, why. Was it originally all the way at the end? It was originally all the way at the, the, the last kind of like little yeah, time, right there, right where Matt's on. It would be like the first, on the first lot. Right. That's where they originally were, somewhere around there. Where Matt is. Yeah. That's where and this is on the, much better. And this is where it is now. Yeah. This is on the north better. side. This is the south side. This is the south side. Correct. Yeah. The, you know where this is, Tommy? This is right in front of Flame. Right in front of Flame, yeah. Oh, okay. Right in front of Flame. Flames you come right out here. the door, it's right there. Yeah. All righty. Um, I don't know. Enhanced discussion. It, additional Come on, power. John. Come on, John. <laughs> come on, John. So it seems to me, so I guess what I'm hearing is that there's going to be two pads, one for each charging station. And they're very close together. I, I think maybe you can think about making one pad and making it a little bit further out so that anybody that's rolling in the wrong direction, not watching where they're going, will hit a curb first before they hit the bollard. I think that's so in other words, you're not doing the whole thing. But so you're just saying moving the pad out to like here? Moving the pad out another couple of feet out and in front. And combining it? Like and, and making it, yeah, yeah make, make one pan. I mean, it's just going to be yeah. instead quicker. of two slabs, just You'll one slab. You'll spend a little bit slab. more on the concrete, but you're going to spend less time on you know some of the preparation. Right. And if you if you bring it out a little further towards the edge line, there will be something for a car to bounce up against when they're if they're not looking before they get your bollard and you're out there doing some. Yeah, you won't have to prep out. the lines in between. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's just a little added. It's not going to stop somebody from. Really not looking and going at a, a yeah, high I got speed you. and getting nothing it. Well. But nothing, yeah. Which, which side of the, um, are the screens going to be on, the television screens or the advertisement screens? I They're double-sided. It's double-sided. Yeah. So it will be on the, on the, ro on the road Both side yeah. and on Correct. the parking area yeah. side. Correct. Okay. 
I think that's a great suggestion from John. So we can certainly look at um, just amending the, the plan and we'll present new sheets to the board for their consideration. And I know the Ballard placement there is probably just um, approximate where the yellow little yellow dots are. Am I correct? That's your Ballard placement? Yeah. Yep. So, so, that's so, good. so actually you could probably move them out just a hair mm -hmm. and would even give you added added security so hopefully they wouldn't get hit but you wouldn't want one in front of it of course because that would probably block your, your screen your screen okay. so john can i ask you a question so um right now those are, those are approximately three by threes yeah i think okay. three and a half by three and a half right three and a quarter. so three what what is that space in between them right now my guess is about 18 inches i would agree <laughs> So, so you're yeah, looking so at you're, you're looking at uh, so how far would you like to come out? Like I just like to give them some kind of a guideline. Do we want is it, if it's three by three with the 18 inches, you're probably looking at uh, a six by six, seven by seven, but you want to come out a little more, so you want to go like seven feet by. Yes, yeah, something like that. So I think it should go out 18 inches to a couple of feet out. I can certainly work with these guys through email mm -hmm. sketches and just you know, settle it, yeah. um, you know, without you spending okay. all your money and so forth, but making it a little bit more safe for everyone. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I think eight, John. 18 inches that would probably be really good. Right, yeah. John? Yeah. Kristen, did you see the um, Abaca memo? We did. Um, and the Kimley Horn studied the ability to have an accessible space. Um, in order to do that, we would need to take up one additional parking space for every EV station space that we were installing. So mm -hmm. the mall would lose parking spaces, which impacts the site plan for the mall, mm -hmm. uh, the parking for the mall. Um, also to kind of, to kind of address that right on the south side, you do have this non-curbed area that provides an additional, additional space as opposed functionally, to- Functionally, right? Yeah, functionally, as opposed to moving them more interior to the lot where you could have cars on either side at least here on the south side you have that little bit of additional space um so while that comment is, is certainly well received you know that's something else that mall ownership ultimately would have a say in but um knowing a little bit about you know the, the plan there and, and parking that may be an issue to take up two spaces for every one essentially i mean but they do have an abundance of parking Right, John. I don't think the I don't think the parking would be the issue. Right. Well, I mean, it would require an amendment to the mall's plan and authorization from the mall too. I think it's right. more about the authorization from the mall. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't think the board would have a problem amending the plan. Yeah, it's another application, and you know, while we love appearing here before you, this has been a long road for Volta and an expensive one. So, um, the point is certainly well taken, and from a functional standpoint, I think the the south side entrance provides um, a little bit more accessibility. What do you guys think? I mean, are, are, is it, are there any accessible charging stations anywhere in Yorktown? What do you mean? Uh, From a handicap accessibility yeah, standpoint? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, we're, we're, they're only getting put in now, right? Man, the there's, new ones, the I know the answer. Over, I, I think the answer is no. Well, I think that no. I think the one over in uh, back by Staples, there may be. Oh, well, Maybe. I mean, but I think it's more from a, I don't think it's designated handicap, but maybe more from a functionality standpoint. So these here would be, so the way these are placed now, rather than on the far ends, actually does give you the accessibility yeah. that you right. need and the safety point that you need to get a, you know, handicap individual or individuals in and out of the vehicles. The charging ports are where in the back, like the, uh, on most of them, aren't they? Where, uh, by where like the gas tank would be it depends on the vehicle some are placed where the gas tank could be some vehicles like the nissan leaf for example have them in the front okay and then it just depends on the side of the car but cars can either front in or back in so that allows for any type of vehicle to park at these stalls and i'll say as the design stands now functionally with no curb essentially the striped island that exists here and on the other side as well functionally acts as an access north side aisle. has the same setup there's one um access aisle that kind of tapers off this one's slightly larger but similarly, by having the, I'll say, floor space available, someone could exit their vehicle with the current design and access the stalls uh, and the fixtures themselves. It would be big enough is what you're saying? Correct. Yeah. Not from a 
complete ADA compliance standpoint, but from a functionality, we have room standpoint, it would work. And the fixtures themselves are accessible. So in terms of how the charger sits above grade is accessible. Okay. okay. So if we actually do put a curb there and it pushes the station further back, right. then that reach might push that into the fixture not being accessible. That's a good so point that too. So that's something yeah. else that we should consider yeah, without that's a good point. dimensions. Mm -hmm. that's but this looks a lot better from where we started. Mm -hmm. Planning board. They're killing it. Good yeah. job. <laughs> well, me. Just that guy over there. <laughs> okay. All right. So next <laughs> step would be: Do you want to, John? You want to just come up here real quick? I mean, do you? Do you want to want to work with them on on just filling in the, mm -hmm. the gaps there and then coming back? Yeah, you you can set your next your next step. I can work with them in very short time to just settle the boundaries of the pad. I'm okay with that. I mean, I think oh. the next step though is it's approval. not going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I think it's you know right. I don't think that we need to go much be more beyond that. I mean, unless so the next step is an approval, but we could put it with a contingency that. And we're uh, waiting for these plans. That's it. That's it. Yeah, we can just make sure that we're all on the same page and accept the, an approval. Oh, I don't think. I don't know if you wanted him to come back to see if you wanted to see it. Have John work on it and come back with it. No. No, a pad is a pad. Okay. Whatever the size then is. We'll, we'll then let's let's put a period at the end of the conversation and we'll work with our town attorney to get an approving resolution on yep. for next week. We'll be done with the pad by then. You sure? Absolutely. It's only 18 inches. With the pad, John, uh, or with the drawing? Three. With the drawing. <laughs> okay, just check it. We're going to have both. <laughs> three or three and a quarter. Awesome. All right. JT's the main. Greatly well appreciate done. it. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Good appreciate it. We look forward to seeing thank it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, and let's see. Now we have 3451 Crompon Road, the Gulf Gas Station. Paul Tyree? Uh, I'm Paul's dad. He wouldn't go for me. <laughs> how you doing i'm doing good thank you very much for your time I yeah no thank you for yours us out. Uh, should i start us out or uh, introduce your uh your your project and and see where we're at i know we've uh put out the project for referral we've got a couple of comments back have you seen them all i have i think okay. we're, i think we're smooth with the backup board and with the conservation board and we were with the planning folks last night uh yep and it seems like everything is a go. The number one issue is the uh, the condition of the site. Right, right. I know that that was that was raised. I just want to just tick through these if we can real quick. From Abaca, um, they had comments regarding the existing pylon sign. Uh, it board discussed the possibility of installing a monument sign. The proposal should incorporate some asphalt and landscape into the area to enhance and soften the site. Board noted that if the monument sign is not feasible, it does not object for the replacement of the sign face in the existing cabinet as proposed. Regarding the canopy and signage, the board was pleased with the canopy and signage as it was presented. The board was also pleased with the upgrade to the fuel dispensers as presented, and they had no issues with the lighting plan. Uh, the conservation board saw no adverse environmental impact. Planning board. So let's let's go through the planning board's uh, discussion last night. Uh, and Serge, I know you were there, Councilman Esposito. Yes. And uh, so you, you want to just talk to us about last night and the comments from the planning board, and if you were able to address them. Well, we did. Uh, I was certainly there, and, and we heard everything. Just to bring you back to the project, the, pro the, the project is really an upgrade to the uh, tanks that are on the site. Mm -hmm. They have very old tanks on the site. Uh, the goal is to replace the tanks with double wall tanks, replace the piping, replace the vent, uh, uh, ventilation system, replace the dispensers, and then put the canopy up. Uh, I think we're through all that. I think everyone's satisfied with that, all yep. the committees. And the, the number one area is that so there's a tenant a gulf coming in here for 7-eleven they're going to be selling the fuel uh there's a still a mechanics bay there there's still a, the, the store that's there uh those stores will probably be there in four to five years from now when 7-eleven is proposing at that point in time to come back in and 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 and, and do a whole design uh, uh probably put up a new building uh, uh whether the mechanics bay will still be there down the road i can't even say that today right but the one thing they did need to do was to put these uh 
to get these tanks in and of course they wanted to put the canopy in so they can get a volume enhancement at the site and see if this you know see if it's going to work for them long term on, on the 711 side so so their their model is to so with it with uh, just want to make sure i'm hearing this correctly mm -hmm. uh, you know obviously the the you know replacing the tanks is paramount gotta do it i think anyone's arguing against that right but you're saying that we have to wait four to five years to see an upgrade on the on the rest of the site well there's a new they don't own the property uh, but they'll be the managing tenant uh yep. for the uh for both the store the mechanics bays and of course for the fueling uh uh, the, when we proposing to do the construction next month, of course, we're going to get all the cars out of there. One of the biggest issues, I think, is the cars that are stored there. Uh, 7-Eleven is going to take whatever control they can at this point in time to keep those cars off there and restrict them. I don't think there's any restrictions now on the number of cars there. But as 7-Eleven asked me to present tonight, if you want to control the number of cars there, with them more than willing to agree to anything as part of getting the, getting the tanks and getting the canopy up and being done with this phase of the project and whatever's decided five years down the road, uh, decide. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know how the town can help it with that. Uh, so the site, the site's a disaster. I mean, I mean, it just. It, I mean, I'm sorry, but it's it's very I'm unsightly. Sorry to me. Seven Eleven doesn't very like happy it. with it at all. Um, I know that. Uh, at the planning board meeting last night, um, sorry, Doc. Thank you. What happened? No, I apologize. I asked her to go. Keep going. You keep going. You're, you're rolling. Oh, um, so uh, I know that um, again. Uh, the main concern was, you know, the condition of the site. I mean, it's it's not even remotely manicured, um, and 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 the, and the amount of cars at at that site. Um, I know that the tanks are 30 years old or clo close to 30 or 30 plus to 32 years. I don't remember the exact number from last night. It was late. 34 years. 34. So I, I don't like, like the supervisor said, I don't think that anybody is going to, you know, go against that. So the tanks really need to get replaced. Um, the question was about the canopy. You're saying it's, it, it'll, it'll provide a volume enhancement. The only reason the canopies are going up is if the station down the street has a canopy and this one doesn't have a canopy, people are going to gravitate to the places. It's not going to give them the volume that they need to make, you know, to make any type of return on it. To cash uh, And they do, please. Uh, 7-Eleven feels, I've driven by the site plenty of times and driven in there. It's, it, needs a, it needs a lot of love. 7-Eleven uh, will agree to whatever Sorry, you'd like them to agree to as far as restricting the site. I don't know if, you know, there's no violations on it, but I'm assuming that they're 30 years ago when they did the last project there or 100 years ago when they did it, uh, it wasn't required. But if you wanted to put restrictions on that to control that, they'll certainly help as the new tenants and uh, helping to manage their sub on this. So who, I, who do those, I'm sorry, Tom, who, who do those cars belong to? I mean, is it the mechanic or? The mechanic. I mean, that guy. That guy's that busy. Does this does a half a million I'm cars? Sure, I'm sure when we clear out every car to do this construction, uh, uh, half of them aren't coming back. But uh, to put, I, and I wish I knew the terminology. You have, what type of restriction you put on it to control the number of cars that are allowed to park at the site? Yeah. I think 7-Eleven would be more to agree to do that, and they'll enforce that with their tenant. Tommy, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, John, uh, if you could come up for just a second, we had a similar situation where the Cocoa Farms is now. Yeah. And I believe we did go in with code enforcement and we did have him clean out a lot of the cars that were in uh, a bunch of different arrays of disassembly or assembly, I don't know which we'd call it. When we did that site walk over there at that yes. one point in time, I think we counted 135, but there was a lot. There was a lot, yeah. Um, this may be something that um, our code enforcement has to get involved in at this point and uh, I mean, we have to make some type of a, well, what would site plan, I guess, you'd probably have to look back and see what would site plan allow on this particular site in as far as parking spots and how many cars could be there. Yeah. You know, so. Well, we'd have to look at, look for a site plan. I don't know that there's a site plan that represents an approval. I, I don't know that. Okay. I've seen some old site plans in my recollection. I know that they exist. We'll just have to go back and refer to them to see what they say. All right, let's let's uh, yeah, let's do that first, and then then we can move forward from there. But in the meantime, um, I don't know that they're coded to sell cars or to have unlicensed vehicles on the site, and so on and so forth. So maybe that's a uh, a look see for our yeah. 
code looks enforcement. It looks like they're parking things off their off their property. Off their property, off at least off their asphalt. Yep. So there's a number of things that I think you can do here. Um, I, I'm guessing that the site plan isn't going to tell us much, other than the extents of the um, asphalt paving, for instance, and number of parking spaces, and then you can limit it to the number of parking spaces, I think, mm -hmm. which would probably eliminate half of what you see there, I think. Yeah. So. I think that makes sense. I think we work with code, and I think we work with yeah. the building department and our planning department to make sure that they're compliant with their with their site plan. Yeah, that's what we did pr yeah. prior to Cocoa Farms and uh, Porco Energy. Yep. So the question at, at planning yesterday what wasn't the tanks, it was whether uh, it was the canopy. It was it was due to tanks and yes and no on the canopy. That was that was their question. That was their concern. Um, <clears throat> so I think basically, I mean, I mean, I think we all agree that the tanks, the thirty four years old. Yeah, you got to yeah. do the tanks. So the question then is, uh, and I think that's your question as well, right? Yeah. You is, do, is whether you do the canopy or not. It's a feasible project. They can put <laughs> the canopy up and pay for it, and then upgrade the whole site. They would applaud 7-Eleven, of course, anything you can do with the vehicles on site. Uh, they'll be handling it themselves when construction starts. But uh, I at least appreciate the honesty that you're looking at four to five years until you're coming in. And, and so I don't know if it's really fair to tell them to wait four to five years to do the canopy. No. So if we can go tackle, you know, the, the compliance issue through building and, and planning, obviously the tanks are a, a, a no question. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's really fair for us to, to hold them up on the canopy for a you know maybe in four to five years. I don't think that really makes that really makes sense, and I don't think it's fair for the business. And I don't think it's really fair for the residents either. They deserve an upgrade. And do you guys have a, a, a an so idea of what the else. building yeah. is going to look like that you may? Okay. I'm the environmental remediation contractor. I'm going to take right. care yep. of the soil remediation, the groundwater right. remediation, replace the tanks. But yeah. what they're doing five years down the road. Right, uh, you can't predict that. And these are 34 year old single wall tanks that had to replace right. the double wall the whole nine yards. We had this discussion the other night. Yeah. yeah. Old, yeah. Old yep. Double wall piping, double yep. ventilation yep. Yep. piping. Uh, th this is definitely what you want in the town. And yeah. You're There's take no care doubt. Of, take care of this. Uh, there's no doubt on the environment. I think the question just is on the canopy side. Okay. I think that's really what we need to figure out. John, you wanted to add something? Yeah. Question for. Mr. Tyree, Mr. Yeah. My suggestion would be that there is a set of documents that's been produced here, enhance them showing parking spaces with a limitation on mm. the number of parked cars today as part of the approval for the gas tanks and the canopy. You would present the proposed number? Yes. Yeah, so in other words, you're going to do essentially what is a site plan, but a very simple one that shows the extents of your paving width a number of storage or parking, I should say, okay. which would give the um, code enforcement guys better authority mm -hmm. to manage yeah. what happens out there yeah. as of the date of your approval. Right. So I, I think that uh, gets sense. somewhere halfway in between where everybody, I think, wishes to end up. And to the supervisor's point, I think that, that the canopy is, is part and parcel to doing the tanks, number one. Right. Uh, and number two, the monument sign is is kind of the the way things are going here now, um, if it's at all possible to be done on that particular just, site. We've we, the engineers have driven up and down. There's just no there's just no view for, for the sign. For the sign. So that's why they told us we can do the upgrade on it. Upgrade. Uh, okay. If you look at it, John, with the, regarding the monument sign, that's been something that we've been. Yep. We've been, uh, you know, it's one area we've been sticklers about is, yes. is preferring the monument sign. Right. So it's uh, a single pole sign that, you know, arcs over and on top of it is a four foot high sign. Gets you to maxing out at about 20 feet. Four this is feet, it right here. Four feet over the, right. That's four feet over the requirement now, the height limitation now. Mm -hmm. So um, in the best case scenario, they would redo that piece hopefully try to make it a double pole and get it down to a topping out at 16 feet. Is that possible? That's what it would be. So it, it, it's a new construction of, of the sign pole and so forth. If they look at the... Um, it's possible if it's a requirement, I'll deliver that information to my client. Sunoco station out on uh, Route 6, sure. the old, the AMPM out there. That was one that I, I remember came before some time ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Same, same type of situation. Right. Right. <clears throat> 
All right, so I think I think it's clear the the board feels that the 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 tank remediation uh, must go forward. Uh, Sergio, where are you at on the uh, council members on the on the canopy? Uh, following the recommendations of uh, of, of uh, John Tagada, if if um, if we go down that road and we 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 get to a point like a middle of the road, I, I'd be fine with it, no problem. I mean, I wasn't against it to begin with, but um, yeah, I think I like that. That's a good plan. Right. So we'll get. So we'll have you do a, just a basic site plan, so that would enhance the code enforcement uh, abilities mm -hmm. uh, to the current to the situation. Um, but I don't. I just don't think that making everyone wait four to five years uh, makes sense. Agree. Um, you okay with that, Councilman? You're all right with that. Absolutely. Okay. All right. We'll set the public hearing for that. Yep. So we'll set the public hearing for the 18th. All right, so we'll set the public hearing for October 18th, <laughs> and we'll go from there. In the meantime, could you, between now and then, could you work with Mr. Tagater on, on that site plan? Immediately. Okay, mm -hmm. and could you, could you find out some more information when you come, maybe, again, between now and then on the sign? Correct, I will. To let your client know that there's going to be some changes to the sign. Matt, could you bring up um, the intersection of uh, Hill and Route 6, at, just to give them a... Uh, Hill or Lee? You're looking, you're uh, looking Lee. at Lee. Yeah. Lee and Route 6, I'm sorry. I don't know if this is going to have the um, upgrade The upgrade on here. Take a look. I will do my... It's been there for a while now, so it might. Just... Just my... uh, nope, I'm going this way. At least I didn't say barger. Yeah, see, it's still the old. It's not the current. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, right. Okay. This is from 2017. So don't look at okay. that. We're gonna take that off the screen. <laughs> disregard. <laughs> disregard last. Yeah. yeah. If you drive up there now, though, if you I go to. I drove by it on the way here. If you, yeah. All right. So you know, <laughs> you, you know go. what it is. All right. So yeah, if we can, if you can just, work, you know, just communicate with your client on that and come back to us with with something on the sign. Absolutely. I think that completes the package, right, John? Okay. Thank, thank you. Very thank much. you. Sure, thank you. Everybody's time. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll see you on the 18th. Uh, we'll make a motion. Do, do we make a motion on that? Motion. We have a motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. We'll go to. <laughs> Excellent. We'll go to resolutions. Another resolution. Uh, we passed one in February, but the uh, public hearing is now open regarding the NYSEG rate case, uh, looking at potentially an increase of. Uh, of 31% for mm -hmm. electric uh, and 19% for natural gas. The hits uh, just keep coming. Mm -hmm. And I also just want to note my significant disappointment in the Public Service Commission for not granting us an in-person uh, hearing as was requested mm. here in the town of Yorktown. Uh, but this, once again, just states emphatically the board's opposition to NYSEG's proposed rate increase. And I also, you know, I've been hearing a lot from residents. I think it's important to note delivery and production. The delivery rates have gone up. Again, people got hit again. This is just for, uh, the, I'm sorry, the production rates went up again. This is for uh, the delivery. Mm -hmm. So it just continues to get more and more expensive uh, on the utility side. Uh, we will authorize the comptroller to refund Carla Bongiorno Spezio for, uh, of overpayment on the water bill for the amount of $427.83. We're going to authorize the comptroller to provide Jerry Permuto the appropriate back pay. This is an amendment uh, from a previous week's resolution uh, with the dates and authorize the comptroller to provide Jerry Permuto with the appropriate differential pay. Again, just amending uh, resolutions that were passed previously. We're going to authorize the comptroller to release the escrow to uh, deposit to Deborah E. Farrell. We're also going to authorize the comptroller to process a budget transfer for Parks uh, Department, uh, transferring $9,000 from the temp help to the park improvements uh, for the Patriot Skate Park Ramp Repair Project that is ongoing. We are also going to authorize the comptroller to establish a trust account this is going to be titled Parks Capital Improvement Trust. Uh, since the planning board did approve the Granite Knolls carport last night, uh, this will uh, be funded by those lease payments to the town. 
We're going to authorize the town engineer to file an application uh, for funds for the New York State Water Infrastructure Improvement Grant. Uh, this is going to be directly for the Hallux Mill Sewer uh, District Extension Phase 1. Try to reduce the 3.2 million. And we are going to award uh, a bid to the A. DeVito and Sun Inc. Uh, for the renovation of the town hall entrance. Motion. We're, oh, oh, we're not done yet. Oh. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. from closed. We have a resolution from the highway department. Be resolved that Nicholas Burns is hereby appointed heavy motor equipment operator job class code 0429-02 within the highway department effective September 19th, 2022 to be paid from Yorktown CSCA salary schedule A group 12 step one, which is $64,385 annually. Be it further resolved that this appointment is subject to a probationary period of no more than 12 weeks commencing on the first date of appointment on September 19th, 2022. Uh, and then in regards to scheduling, uh, we have a, we're going to make a motion uh, to cancel the October 4th town board meeting in, in observation of Yom Kippur. And what did we decide on the 27th? I, I think the second day is as important as the first day for Rosh Hashanah. Okay. The, it's a two-day. So that we're also. That's the one you're talking about, September. September 27th. September Sunday is the 25th of when it starts at sundown. It starts at sundown the 25th and ends days. sunset the 27th. Okay, so, so then we will also can't be canceling the Tuesday, September 27th town board meeting in observation of Rosh Hashanah. So moved. We have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. If there's no other business before the board, then we will make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Aye. We're down. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stay safe, Yorktown. Lock your car doors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah.